Welcome to our lecture on the electron transport chain. The mitochondria house the major enzymatic systems used to complete the oxidation of sugars, fats, and proteins to produce usable energy in the form of ATP. Each of these three substrates can be catabolized to acetyl-CoA, which then enters the first of these processes, the citric acid cycle, taking place in the mitochondrial matrix. Electrons harvested in the Krebs cycle are then transported to the electron transport chain, which consists of a series of multi-subunit protein complexes embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Here, the electrons removed by the citric acid cycle by NADH and FADH2 are used to power the pumping of protons from the matrix to the inner membrane space, generating a potential difference across the inner mitochondrial membrane. This potential difference is ultimately used to power the synthesis of ATP in the final step of oxidative phosphorylation. We will focus here on the details of the electron transport chain. The electrons from our food molecules carry energy that drive the movement of protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane into the inner membrane space. This will form a gradient of protons that will be used to make ATP. The potential energy of the system can be calculated using the equation shown here, where free energy of the system is defined as negative NF delta E naught prime. N is the number of electrons transferred in the reaction. F is the Faraday's constant. And the change in standard reduction potential is made by subtracting the donor energy from the acceptor. If this difference is positive, then the free energy of the system will be negative and happen spontaneously. In this case, the protons will be pumped. NADH brings free energy to the electron transport chain by binding to the largest of the respiratory complexes, the NADHQ oxidoreductase, or complex 1. This L-shaped enzyme contains a hydrophobic domain embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane and a hydrophilic arm protruding into the mitochondrial matrix containing the NADH binding site. The whole complex consists of 45 subunits and is almost one megadalton in mass. The membrane bound portion of the complex shown here in green, blue, and purple pumps protons across the membrane. Each pair of electrons obtained from NADH will power the transport of four protons. Remarkably, the structure reveals that each of these protons is transported by a dedicated protein pump. Complex 1 has a chain of transporters all arranged in a row. The final transporter in the chain, colored green here, has a tail that reaches back and links all the transporters and is thought to synchronize the electron transport reaction with the proton pumping cycle in all four transporters. Coenzymes Q, or ubiquinones, are found in the cells of all aerobic organisms, from the simplest bacteria to humans. They mediate important proton and electron transfer reactions in the mitochondria, chloroplasts, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, and the plasma membrane of oxidative bacteria. Thus, they are of key importance for producing energy during oxidative metabolism and photosynthesis. The electrons are ultimately used to reduce molecular oxygen to water, releasing the energy necessary to sustain the life of the cell. Coenzyme Q exists in various reduced and oxidized forms, that enable it to accept electrons from the NADH and FADH2 electron carriers generated in the Krebs cycle. The most reduced and the most oxidized forms are shown here. Notably, coenzyme Q is predominantly a hydrophobic molecule and can travel inside the lipid portion of the inner mitochondrial membrane enabling it to deliver electrons to the membrane protein pumps embedded there. 
quinones can accept a total of two protons and two electrons, giving rise to nine potential redox states. For example, you can have coenzyme Q in the fully oxidized state, or it can pick up one proton or two protons, or one electron or two electrons, or one electron and one proton, etc. Due to this flexibility, this mechanism of electron transport has been highly exploited in biological systems. Oxidation of NADH by complex 1 yields NAD+, which returns to the Krebs cycle, and two electrons, which reduce flavin mononucleotide, and are then systematically passed through seven or eight iron-sulfur clusters to the quinone binding site reducing coenzyme Q to QH2 due to the large difference in the energy reduction potential between NADH and coenzyme Q electron transfer induces changes in the membrane module of complex 1 resulting in the pumping of four protons as seen in the previous slide proteins are amazingly large places for very small electrons and protons to be moved around if you look at complex 1 in the electron transport chain, the binding site of NADH and coenzyme Q are quite far apart. Thus, the electrons cannot be transferred directly between the two molecules. Transfer of the electrons requires additional cofactors to pass the electrons through the protein to the correct location. Flavin mononucleotide is related to FAD and can also serve as a prosthetic group that is able to transfer electrons and protons within a protein. Within complex 1, it is the first electron acceptor mediating the oxidation of NADH to NAD+. Iron sulfur clusters are also perfect for the task of transporting electrons and protons since they form a unique delocalized system for storing electrons. Two types of clusters are particularly common. A square arrangement of two irons and two sulfurs and a distorted cube composed of four irons and four sulfurs. Both are seen in complex one protein shown here. Here is another diagram of the cube form of the iron sulfur complex shown accepting one, two, or three electrons. In conclusion, the activity of complex 1 elicited by one NADH molecule yields four protons pumped into the intermitochondrial space, the generation of one fully reduced coenzyme Q molecule, and the recycling of reduced NADH to oxidized NAD plus for reuse in the Krebs cycle.